Justin, and this is my 2017 EcoBoost Mustang. I got a good deal on it. It's a uh, better gas mileage and I can do some fun stuff to it. Yeah, actually, a Mustang has been one of my dream cars since I was a kid. It's just always been something that I've been more attracted to as far as the aesthetics of it looks better to me in my personal opinion. I've always been a fan of that. I just enjoy it much more. And also it's been one of those things where it's kind of like been something that other family members previously have owned and so it's just I've gravitated towards it. No, I haven't really experienced any of that yet. It's kind of interesting being on the side of so my good. passenger side. I know, right? It is smooth though. Oh, so nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this car feels so big. It, I don't, it does know, feel big. I don't know why it feels big. Like it's not that much bigger than my car and it's actually not any wider. But it just feels like it from the inside though. Turbo. Yeah, yours Jesus Christ, yours is a lot more or a lot less laggy than mine. Turbo, yeah. Yeah, like it's like 2000 RPM. Right there. Yeah. God, it's freaking nice actually. Oh yeah, dude, that's funny. With this, with this, um, with the summer or the what is this called? Sport package. The, 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 yeah. yeah, with the performance package, this the handling feels like my car a lot. It has about the same amount of roll. Does it have different modes, like any like touring or sport? Um, that's on the premium package. Okay, so there's one mode for the sport, huh? Yeah, for this one it's just the same, but for the yeah. steering wheel we can adjust that. This thing hauls ass, eh? Jesus Christ. Yeah. What's the? It's th it's like three thirty horsepower. Three ten. 310. Yeah. And 320 foot pounds of torque. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, I mean, like, yeah, on the, on, in canyons like this, that's when you're just like, dude, that's enough. But, uh, it's when you're like on the freeway and you really want to like haul ass or something like that. That's when yeah. you're just like, okay, I want 500. Exactly. But, no, yeah, this is, this handles really good. Yeah, you're right. Like, right here, you don't need that much. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like, do we really need to get there? Like, any faster? Oh, dude, that's a good brake feel too. What's up? The, your braking is like right there. It's not like you know how some pedals are. Um, some pedals go in and then it bites. Yeah. With the brake, I hate. Oh, Damien's car was the worst. It was the, the worst. It was just too much. You got a nice little car too. Right? Yeah, GLA. It was just the braking was funky. Interesting. So yeah, this car feels bigger, but it hand. It almost feels nicer to drive, just like the, it's more predictable. Mine's old school Japanese feeling with the, it, like you gotta wait for the turbo. It, it feels really weak unless you're in boost. This doesn't feel weak when it's not in boost. Like I don't think I'm really, I'm hardly in boost right here. But it just, just goes. This is one of those cars where you, you can get in and you can go quick like right away. Go quick like right away. This car would be faster than mine with a tune. That's so funny. I think it, I really think it would, because this feels this feels absolutely faster than the Camaro stock. Yeah, the Camaro. Uh, the, like this uh, horsepower stock, two seventy five. Two seventy five, uh, two ninety five torque. So this is this beats it. You would think that it would, it would not be that case because it's a lighter car. Yeah, hardly any gear changes on that road, huh? What were you in third? Fourth, like third, and fourth the whole time, yeah. man. Let's go this way actually a little bit, and then we'll head back up. Yeah. See what second is, cause mine shoots you pretty good. Second in this car. GTR. This, yeah, this is right in between. Uh, this is right in between my car stock and my cartoon. Like I think mine picks up a little more, yeah. but. Uh, it's just so instant. This, this
fastest motors in action drive, hands down. Like you, you just can't run. Uh, I would have to get a small turbo. I would have to do a bi turbo setup to get like this feel, this responsiveness. Yeah. This like if someone chooses this over the GT and it's just like okay, well, is it just as nice to drive? I would say absolutely. Like, like it's fine. I'm like okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit of gas. Yeah. Forward, you know, mine. It's not that simple. You gotta know the pedal. You gotta, you gotta be in an intimate relationship with the turbo. You gotta just know exactly what you're doing oh, okay. for to get certain power levels out of it. I'll have you drive it soon too. That, that'll be a good video as well. Like. Six. I can't. It's actually hard to tell how hard the engines are. I, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm nowhere near red line. I was, I, I was actually six because it's a, it's a quiet car. Yeah. Woo. All right, we're gonna take an intermission and get a little air in on the way back up. Cool. Oh Jesus. That feels nice. Oh, it's so hot. Ford knows how to do their pedals. Like, I'm, it's like. Whatever I do with my foot, that's what the car does. Where the Camaro, it's it's like, like why, why would you do that? Okay, I'm giving you a quarter throttle. Like, why would you get into that much boost when, like, you know, yesterday I did that? And it's not the like, It's such an unpredictable car. It's ridiculous. But it's still cool. It has character. Yeah. Uh, man, they stepped their game up with the shifter. Um, a big complaint was uh, Ford's gearboxes and all the Mustangs were like total garbage. It felt awful to shift. It would actually uh, lock you out of fifth sometimes when it when you wanted to go into fifth. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I, they changed them all. I think they're all Tremex now. I'm pretty sure you have the same gearbox that's in a Camaro SS. I'm almost positive they just did all the Tremec ones now. This handles so much better than a GT. Like a base model GT. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure with the sport package, it's all good, you know. But if you can't get a GT350, or I'll roll them up for now. Let me get some better audio. Where's the? There it is. Yeah. Um. Like, if you can afford a GT350, yeah, that's the big boss Mustang. It probably outhandles this. It does everything better. But I mean, you can say that about you know me with the CL1 too. Exactly. It's yeah. it's just they're expensive, yeah. This is the closest you're gonna get as far as good handling sock uh to like you know one of those good mustangs like that yeah uh same with mine like you would have to get the ss1 le which is a lot more affordable than the gt350 the ss1 le is probably better handling than my car just because of the tire size but um that's like 45 dollars somewhere around there let's see uh, all right testing of the turbo leg right now all right like mm, let's see 3500 rpm foot to the floor going Yeah, that's that's a good half second less than mine. <laughs> Alrighty, that's nice. This, man, this is this is a great car to learn manual on. It's delightful. So what I mean when I say the new EcoBoost feels like a V8 is that it's apparent that Ford has taken the linear power band of the Focus RS and applied it to the new 2017 EcoBoost. There's never been a significant amount of turbo lag with the EcoBoost engine, and it seems now that they've advanced like the timing even more because there's like zero lag with the throttle. It's one of the most predictable turbo cars I've driven. As soon as you give it like the slightest amount of throttle, the turbo feels spooled up and ready to give you all of the torque you need in the lower RPMs, just like a GT does. The only time you notice a tiny bit of lag is when you very quickly give it full throttle, which is to be expected. Turbocharged cars have come a long way from the days of Japanese sports cars with the huge turbo lag. Some of these four banger sports cars deserve way more respect than they receive, and at the end of the day, a car enthusiast should never be judged by the number of cylinders in their car, but rather how much joy their vehicle brings them. And I hope this doesn't come off as a biased rant, because as much as I love turbo cars for their bargain horsepower, as far as response and sound goes, there really is no replacement for displacement. And I love me a good GT350. It's good as fuck is what it is. Four cylinder muscle car. Fuck with it. Alright. No, I was gonna say now you should like peel out, but then again I was like no. Nah. nah. Judged by the number of cylinders. 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 <laughs> Nipple hairs. <laughs> I eat pears. <laughs> Down the stairs. <laughs> P9.
think this belches. All right. So about the car. So what I really mean is that I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs>